Okay, so today we will discuss building patterns. Okay. With calculus columns. Which, yeah, I actually was kind of proud of myself for this, and then I realized that it's not actually that hard. <laughs> like, so what I wanted was, I went on the internet and looked, and I found that you should have a one inch drop per four feet of run, right? Mm. Oh. And I had this kind of situation where I have this like natural x and y direction, right? And really what I would honestly like is for the water to run, like, my house is here. And I would like for the water to run into that corner over there. But this doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say I have a natural x and y direction, and I would like the water to run that way. You guys cool with this? Because you guys didn't know what my house looked like, right? That wasn't in the problem, so it's totally unfair to assume that you would. And creepy if you did. <laughs> okay, stay out of my back here. So, we would like the water to flow that way, right? Away from whatever. So, I think what we need to do is we need to think, all right, if that's my maximum slope, and I want it to be sloped so that water runs that way, I need it to be sloped in both the x and the y, right? You guys see this? So my question was, if it's sloped in both the x and the y equally, what's the slope in the x and y so I get that along the maximum direction, right? You guys see that? OK, so what does it mean for it to be sloped equally in the x and the y? Yeah, the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y should be the same. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this function. I'm going to call it p for patio. <laughs> OK, so what else should I know about patio? It should be continuous. It needs to be continuous, one, because if it's not continuous, you're going to have a hard time putting the flagging stones on it. And two, it should be flat. It's a patio. Right? So if the patio is flat, what does that mean the patio actually is? Yeah, it should be a plane, right? OK, so patio as a function of x and y should be a plane, which means it should be like a number plus some other number times x plus some other number times y, right? OK, so which pieces do you know? Which pieces don't matter? The first number disconnected from x and y. Yeah, the first number is just the vertical height this thing starts at, right? So it's zero. Yeah, sure. Call it zero, right? You guys all see why I can call it zero? Yeah. Like, it's just an arbitrary designation of height, right? The important thing is that the slopes be right. Uh, so what's your slope in the x direction? Oh, one. A lot of you guys put one for forty-eight there, right? Because it's one. There's twelve inches in a foot. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether you put this as one per four or one per forty-eight. You're just changing the units on x and y around, which don't matter at all. The important thing is that if you slope it at one per forty-eight or one per four in the x and one per four in the y. you're getting above that maximum slope. You guys see why? OK, let's try. This is actually how I did this. So I said, well, what if I just slope it at 1 per 4 and 1 per 4, right? And I'm, it should be noted that my z is in inches now, and my x and y are in feet. OK. You guys see that? It doesn't actually matter whether you convert everything to the same unit. It should be that the x and the y units are the same, because otherwise they'll get screwed up. OK, what is, wait, where is the maximum direction here? Also, please note that my patio slopes up. 
Instead of slope step, it's you gonna pull. That? Well, it'll just instead of draining that way, it'll drain this way, right? It doesn't actually matter. You just want to know. So whatever, this patio slopes up like half of you did that. I don't know why. But where's the maximum drainage? Yeah, is that x equals y, right? Why is it there? What's the gradient of this thing? Yeah, the gradient of p, right, is 1 fourth comma 1 fourth. You guys see that? Kind of with me? Okay. Okay, so where is that biggest? We just said it was in the xy direction, right? So if I take the gradient of p and dot it with a unit vector in that direction, right? Yeah. Okay, see that? So what's a unit vector in the xy, xy or equal direction? One, one. So that's a vector in the xy directions, right? How long is the vector 1, 1? Negative 1. Oh, square root of 2. Square root of 2, right? <coughs> so I got out of this that my steepest slope, right, is a quarter times 1 over the square root of 2 plus a quarter times 1 over the square root of 2, which is all told 2 over 4 square root of 2s, which is the square root of 2 times a quarter, right? You guys see that? Why am I trying to fiddle this into quarters? Because those are what my slope was to begin with, right? You guys see that? I sloped it equally in the x and y at 1 per 4. And it now got bigger by a factor of the square root of 2. You guys see that? Which is bigger than 1, right? So if I want to make this so that I get 1 over 4 out, what do I need to put in? Yeah. I need a quarter divided by the square root of 2. Which is 1 over the square root of 2 inches drop per 4 feet. You guys see that process? This is kind of a pain in the ass to think through all of this. Yeah. Maybe a different approach would have been to notice that if the x partial and the y partial are the same, and you don't know what they are, call them something like k or c. Probably c would be weird, right? Yes. Call them smiley face. Who gives a shit? Put those in here. Calculate the magnitude of the gradient vector, and you'll find out that you need one quarter inch drop per four feet to get this to be that one quart or one inch per four feet. So why does the one over four slope work? Because in that case doesn't that mean that the one is a foot? Because like how does that work out? Oh this guy? Yeah. This is literally one inch per four feet. And then the X units are feet, right? So the feet so unit slash, and I get an inch. You guys cool with that? No. Right, it's just a rise over a run. And so it, as long as your rise units are all the same and your run units are all the same, you'll be OK. You just need to make sure that any runs you put in are in the right run units. It's probably easiest to convert this whole thing to inches. I just wanted to illustrate that contractors don't do that. Cool. The obvious thing 
that wasn't figuring out all this crap, right, is to just take your level and instead of being a dummy and measuring in the x direction and the y direction with your level, you just measure down the axis. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> The only upside of doing it the other way is that it's easier to level the sand, but whatever. Cool? All right, so the answer should have been you need one over square to two inches drop per four feet in both X and Y. And then the other question was, how does rain act on this thing? Yeah, so a raindrop moves northwest from where it lands. Right, so raindrop moves that way. Raindrop moves that way. Raindrop moves that way. They all go the same direction. Some of you guys made these diagrams of like, it all gets together in the middle and flows that way, right? But it's flat. It has no reason to get together in the middle, right? It's all just going to flow that way. Some of you guys said this thing too about it flows to the lowest point, right? So if you make a patio in here, where's your lowest point? The top right corner. Yeah, top right corner, right? Does it all flow to the lowest point? Some of it ends before it makes it there. Yeah, some of it falls off the patio before it makes it there, which is why you put in French drains on the sides. You guys know what a French drain is? So a French drain is where you dig a trench, and you put a tube of perf pipe in it, and then you put a bunch of gravel on top of it. And then water flows into this thing and then gets into the perf pipe and flows out the perf pipe. You want to do this because why? You don't see it. Good. One, you don't see this thing. Two, yeah, because having water in your basement sucks. Cool. Should always be, like, seriously do this. Before the rainy season starts, go stand around your house and wonder which direction the gradient points in. Right? Just like stand at a spot and wonder which way is steepest downhill from here. Just walk around the house. Which way is steepest from down here? Which way is steepest down he from here? Which way is steepest from here? And figure out if any of them point at the basement. Right? If any of them point at the basement, what do you need to do? Make it so they don't. I don't care how you do that. I was going to say, well, if we don't have a basement, I guess we just... Don't. Well, so you have a foundation, though, right? I think. So I kid you not, I was walking around my house doing this, because we just bought a new house, and I found out why the bathroom floor isn't level. The bathroom floor isn't level because some dumbass let a big a, um, a rain gutter empty into a spot where the gradient pointed at the foundation. So of course the water comes out of the downspout, pools at the foundation, and then what happens? The foundation friggin' sinks. Yeah. What happens when the foundation sinks? The floor gets bent. Yeah. What happens when the floor gets bent? It gets worse. Well, if the house is, if it gets bad enough, the house friggin' cracks in half and falls down. Cool? So, check your downspouts. And this. Walk around, check that gradient. It's important. This matters in your life.